Hello, good evening and welcome to our very first lockdown lectern event. This is of course not all we'd like to be at this present moment and we're still waiting for the evening where we can do our three course meal in the dining hall wearing our glamorous black tie but for now we'll just have to deal with being a third of the way there. In true Barney fashion we really wanted to continue as normally as we possibly could but this is of course a new format for Lectern Club. We've asked six formers to record and send in their speeches and Evie has very kindly put it all together for us. As ever with Lectern Club there's a theme and we really wanted to inspire some more positive speeches so tonight's theme is what is essential is invisible the eye. We understand a big part of Lectern is the competition, so if we can get all the technology to work as a committee, we're going to announce the winner and give out feedback live. As is the way with anything over Teams or video, there may well be technical difficulties tonight, but we really hope to keep those at a minimum. Please do bear with us should they arise. Before we begin, we also wanted to thank Mrs Beattie for her continued support, even virtually. Here's a quick message from her. Okay, so when you start filming, you just need to make sure it's top half only. Okay? I know, yeah, yeah, okay. I'm good. Tell me when you're ready. Okay. <laughs> Hi guys, that was Wilson adding his little greeting tonight. I just wanted to add my thanks, first of all, to the speakers who have bravely put themselves out to do this tonight, and also to the committee. Um, I really need to acknowledge their enthusiasm and hard work. Um, in a really unprecedented challenge for Lectern Club, but they have worked so well as a team and have worked really hard to come up with some really ingenious ways to keep this club going. So I just wanted to thank them publicly and uh, I hope you're all looking forward to the world premiere of the very first virtual Lectern Club. I'll hand you back over to the committee now. Did they have to cook their own dinner? Now make sure that you just... I'd now love to introduce Amelia Oates, who will be speaking about a cup of tea and a chocolate biscuit. Over the past year, I've found myself constantly dwelling on the past, whether it be memories of summers gone by or time spent with my friends at school. Life suddenly hit pause when we were least expecting it and propelled us into a time where walking to the shops was and still is a form of escapism. But why should this tragedy mean that we cannot keep progressing. I experienced my own sort of tragedy this year, as I'm sure many of you have, with the passing of my grandfather, Popper. Popper was the type of person who could sit for hours just listening, which he had to do a lot of when I visited him, and never said a bad word about anybody. One memory which will always stay with me is the last time I got to see him in person, late one Sunday afternoon. I'd gone to the kitchen to make him a black coffee and a tea for myself and when I returned I noticed his shoes were placed next to his chair even though he always wore slippers and I asked him whether he would like me to put them away for him. A moment passed and I thought he hadn't heard me because he never turned up his hearing aids but then he jokingly responded no it's okay they're there for when I go out clubbing tonight. At that, we all lost it, doubled over in a pile of giggles after hearing this quiet man suddenly talk about putting his dancing shoes back on at the age of 90. My dad proceeded to play along, telling stories of Papa in his youth. They were my favourite kinds of days, stripped of life's worries and turbulences, to spend time with those who really matter, dunking a chocolate digestive in my tea. I guess what I'm trying to say is, make memories that you can look back on with a smile. I don't mean wallow in self-pity about that holiday you had three years ago in Spain, but what I mean is, just because life has been put on pause, it doesn't mean you have to freeze in time. Life has simply taken us down a different path, so why not take advantage of this opportunity? Spend time with your loved ones. Not time staring at a screen which, no matter how hard you try, will not talk back to you. Do things that bring you real, pure joy, because memories will stay with you forever. Life can seem so overwhelming at times, with deadlines and meetings, 
and Boris's coronavirus update hitting us all at once. But when you stop and strip back all of those layers, life really can be wonderful. We just need to take it back to basics. And now I'd like to introduce Sam Metcalf to the virtual lecture with his speech, Connections. The quote, what is essential, is invisible to the eye, struck me at first. And to be honest, I did search up the quotes he also meant, and topics such as love, kindness and many others came up. One word that links all these topics for me is connection. For example, the connections you have with other people around you. Everyone has different connections with others around them, like the one I have with you watching this. I may be good friends with you, or I may never have spoken to you. That's an example of a connection. Connections with others can also be shown in many different ways. Your connection with someone when you first meet can be critical in your first impression. If you are kind, loving or trustworthy, your connection with others around you will undoubtedly be strong. However, if you lack these attributes, then your connection may not be as strong as you are with others. Connections with others can evolve over time, however. If you are patient and friendly with someone, you may even become better friends with them over time as your connection grows. These connections, therefore, are essential as they fuel your day-to-day -day mood and being. When connections with others are strong, you will generally have a good day-to-day -day mood as you will laugh, have fun and do things you enjoy with them. However, if these connections with others around you are weak, you will miss out on the fun times and chances of creative memories. Of course, your connections with people around you are not visible. It isn't like FIFA where connections are shown by red, orange and green lines. Connections are not visible to the eye, but can be picked up on a sense of how people are acting around you, like body language, for example. However, your connections do not only have to be with people, they can be with places. This could be your home, a favourite holiday destination, and the list goes on. These places are essential, as they are a place where you feel safe or happy. When you go to these places, you may not see the connection with the place, as you may feel comfortable at the place, or even feel safe there, which therefore makes it essential to you. So as I bring this speech to a close, I ask you, what connections do you have that are essential but invisible to the eye? Thank you. Perhaps the speaker most dedicated to her chosen theme tonight, we'd now like to welcome Arwen Jenkins to the virtual lectern, who really is alone in nature. I never thought I'd be here doing a speech for Lectern Club and also wearing wellies and a dress, which I don't normally wear for my walks. But you know, we need to make the most of it. Over the many lockdowns we have had over the past year, I've been able to reflect on a lot, as I'm sure many of you have done as well. Even though most days I'm cooped up in my room watching Netflix and doing schoolwork, at least once or twice a week, I dedicate at least an hour, maybe more, to going for a walk. I take my dog up the hill, and if I go a follow a certain path, I will not see another soul for my whole walk, excluding animals and the many sheep. I just love being alone, surrounded by beauty. And I think that is what is essential in life. This is really cliche and cheesy, and I can acknowledge that. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But I just think that there is something so peaceful about being able to look and experience something beautiful all by yourself. A memory that only you can hold, almost like a secret. Before lockdown, I wasn't really bothered about going for a walk. Normally, it would be with my family to the river. But during lockdown, my perspective has changed. I've never really minded being alone. It was the feeling of loneliness that was difficult for me. But just being able to be in the middle of nowhere, taking in everything around me is just very freeing. And I know that many people don't have this luxury of living in the countryside where there are more sheep than people. Sometimes I can spend a lot of time outside, walking until it gets dark. There have been many occasions where my mum has called me, asking me where I am, or even once my dad coming to look for me. I just simply forget, wrapped up in just being free for an hour. I don't know how to put the feeling or experience fully into words. I think for me, it's just when I'm completely and fully at peace. I think we're all rushing around, our brains never fully shutting off. But in these moments, my mind is the closest it's ever been to clear. I think being in the woods may be the most beautiful and serene for me. I mean, it's pretty cool. <laughs> um, it's maybe because it's a secret dream of mine to run away and start a new life in a simple cabin in the woods 
where I never have to do any more work and instead I can go wildflower picking, grow my own vegetables and maybe have a few farm animals away from technology and the mundane every day. If you couldn't tell, I may or may not have thought about this quite a bit. I think that what makes these memories so special to me is that they don't feel like the mundane every day. Instead, a glimpse into a completely different one. It's a break away from routine. Wake up, lessons, break, work, dinner, break, sleep. And I know that it's a routine of my own creation, but I don't schedule when I'm going for a walk. I can go against my same every day and do something different. Although I may want to escape technology, I normally listen to music when I'm on a walk, pausing every so often so I can call Bear, trying to stop him from scaring the sheep or getting lost somewhere down there. <laughs> uh, I know it's a very common feeling that most people have um, is they want to experience being the main character. It's all over my TikTok for you page. Most of my Spotify playlists are dedicated to a different type of main character, a specific set of songs to fit that specific feeling. This may be listening to heavy metal music to encourage myself to get to the top of a hill, or the complete opposite, classical music from where I'm admiring the view, imagining that I've just run away from a ball, thinking of all the different lives I could have lived. I think the most beautiful thing I've experienced on my walks was seeing a deer. I remember years ago, my dad told me he'd spotted a deer on his walks and how spectacular it had been. For some, this may seem simple, but I just think some of the smaller things in life are the things held closest to you. I only saw it for a few seconds, but even now I can replay it again in my head, even if it only happened a few weeks ago. I also spotted a grey squirrel just a few days ago, I think uh, around over there in one of those trees, uh, and I saw it run up a tree, uh, which I also found really exciting. Uh, I think that what makes these things so special is that it's something I can only share with myself. I mean, I know I'm sharing it with you, um, but for some that may seem sad. But I think in a way, it's a memory that's just for me, a personal thing that no one would ever know about if I kept it to myself. I think that the beauty of nature is essential, something I hadn't realised until now. Or maybe the beauty is enjoying being alone with yourself, something that I have, and I'm sure many of you have struggled to do for a long time. Having this time to myself has allowed me to be happy with who I am, I know that this may seem simple to some, and that's also okay. For some, that feeling of complete peace and beauty may be admiring an artwork, reading a book, or meditation. For me, surrounding myself with nature, the feeling of being the only person in such a beautiful place is essential. Now, can we please welcome to the lectern, Anna, with her speech, The Yearbook. Hello Lectern Club and greetings from the unconventional speech giving area of my bedroom. Uh, my speech is called The Yearbook. Often in life there's a triumph of the invisible over the visible. The love found in a friendship is far more significant than a flimsy friendship bracelet. It brings to mind my last day of secondary school, or more accurately, when I missed my last day of secondary school. As everyone else in my year did last March, I had my last day of secondary school. As you can imagine, I was expecting my last day to be on a hot summer day consumed with an amalgamation of relief of finishing exams and fear for what the results would be. Sitting at home in pyjamas, eating ice cream and watching Bridget Jones whilst all my peers were taking photos and saying their goodbyes wasn't exactly what I was expecting. That day, which sticks out in my mind more than any others of 2020, seemed to be devastating. I wouldn't be in any of the photos, I wouldn't sign anyone's shirt. It would be as though I'd never even been there. It felt as though I'd missed a whole rite of passage. When the yearbook came, since for some reason my school thought it was a 1980s American high school, I mean, crimped hair and all, but uh, the questionable fashion decisions of my peers can't really be blamed on my school. I was not in the yearbook, except for a most likely to ma marry for money nomination. So, a symbol of five years experience. And the only inclusion of me was in a long-winded list of ironic jibes. Well, as any other overthinker would, I immediately came to the conclusion that I would be completely forgotten. I was a negligible person who didn't make so much of a scuff on anybody else's experience. But this symbol meant absolutely nothing. How could a book 
filled with snapshots of the last day of school, in a year where nothing but out of the ordinary happened, be representative of five years of my life. Those five years were hardly all convivial. In fact, most were not. However, the footnote in a book was more than what I had achieved. It failed to mention the unforgettable experiences and friendships I had formed. It was hardly worth more than a piece of kindling. A piece of paper is not a rite of passage. In my case, jumping on stage in a school talent show with 15 other 16 year olds and dancing to ABBA was the true rite of passage. The book I had waited so long for, thinking it was the epitome of a secondary school experience, when in fact everything that was important had not even been recorded in it. But not to be sentimental, it was recorded in my heart instead. Especially in this past year, as a human race, we need to stop placing meaning on tokens and invest more time in ourselves, because that's where the true meaning is found. We're now delighted to welcome to the virtual lectern first time speaker, India Oates, with her speech, Power of Our Brand Stamps. In everyday life, we encounter many diverse people in a range of places where we can leave a lasting impression on them due to our brand stamps. Our brand stamps are the combination of what makes us unique, being our character, personality and traits. A brand stamp is the image that others judge you by. For example, one of the values of our brand stamp in Marwood House is to ensure we are supportive and there for others. I believe one part of my brand stamp would be the character strength of kindness. As an individual, I give it my all to be kind to others. This may be giving a smile to a stranger or a bigger gesture, such as paying for the family takeout. That act of being kind could spur others onto doing similar little acts of kindness. As my brand stamp has affected them, which causes our acts to become connected to one another. I believe this connection is part of our society because of the way people feel when a person is kind to them. Although they may forget what you did, they will never forget how it made them feel. This feeling is contagious, which makes the receiver of the exchange more likely to want to play it forward, to share the generosity to others. Even though my brand stamp is invisible to the eye, it can become essential to others due to its long lasting effect on them. However, some people would suggest that my brand stamp is not invisible to the eye due to being classed as an athlete, which if I'm being honest, can pigeonhole me into stereotypes such as being unintelligent. Delving deeper into my brand stamp can show an array of different characteristics. I can be a leader, but also a follower in certain situations. When in prep school, the children will see me as a leader at the front, causing them to view me in a different light than just the athlete. This brand stamp will last forever and not fade over time. A legacy, if you will. The consequences of my actions and how I treated them may not be visible, but the effects on them will never fade. We can all control what our brand stamp is, as it's not innate. So moving forward as a Barney community during this challenging time, we should strive for our invisible brand stamp to be consisted of consideration, support and thoughtfulness. And last but not least, I'd like to introduce Saskia to the virtual lectern to give her speech on emotions. Every day we feel emotions, sadness, happiness, anger, fear. Emotions can regulate our relationships. They can warn us of danger and tell others how we are feeling. Understanding our emotions and those of other people are essential to our lives. But do we ever stop and think about why and how we feel them? The result of our emotions is visible. When we're a child, we might have tantrum. We might cry as a result of that upset or we might smile when we are happy. 
our faces and body language communicate how we feel to others. But where our emotions come from is not so visible to you and everyone around you. The study of psychology can help answer our curiosity of the root of emotions. And this is something I've become increasingly interested in since starting Psychology A-Level. The brain is wired to look for dangers and rewards, rewards being something that makes us feel good. If one is detected, the region in the brain which contains the feelings releases chemical messages called neurotransmitters, which travel inside neurons from one brain cell to another and then around the body. Emotions the effect of these chemical messages traveling from our brain through our body. If our brain detects a potential threat, it releases the stress hormones, adrenaline and cortisol, which can prepare you for a fight or flight response. However, when we detect or experience a reward, the brain releases dopamine, oxytocin and serotonin. And these chemicals make us feel good and motivate us to continue with the task or behavior. When a person experiences too much of one emotion, for example, feeling overly sad, this can be a result of imbalance of these chemical messages. When we respond to danger or reward situations, the feeling region of the brain registers the situation before the thinking part of the brain. This is why sometimes our emotions lead us to make irrational decisions before our rational brain steps to tell us to do something different. I think it's fascinating to think about how our invisible brain is working strenuously to produce emotions that are so essential to us in so many ways, keeping us safe in danger, communicating well with those around us and enabling us to enjoy things and to feel excitement and happiness. It's important to, to appreciate how complex our bodies are and that it's physical and, men, and chemical processes that are not visible to us are essential to the way we feel. Thank you.